Hi everyone, how are you doing today? In this video, I will be taking a minor digression away from classic literature and talking about something else book related, really related to art. This is a news article I read and just thought it was kind of an interesting subject. So for those of you who have been on social media, you've probably heard about JK Rowling getting quote canceled for some opinions that she's voiced about some social topics. And I don't want to get into those in this video, uh, but that's kind of part of the context for why uh, this, this article was written. Um, Rowling and a bunch of other authors and artists, academics, um, these people have come out and decided to write an open letter uh, denouncing the restriction of debate. So really, a letter in support of free speech especially as it pertains to the arts and literature. And uh, I'm not going to read this article. I actually wanted to go over to the letter and read it and let you know what I think. So it was published on Harper's Magazine, the online version, and it's called A Letter on Justice and Open Debate. And so it says, Our cultural institutions are facing a moment of trial. Powerful protests for racial and social justice are leading to overdue demands for police reform, along with wider calls for greater equality and inclusion across our society, not least in higher education, journalism, philanthropy, and the arts. But this needed reckoning has also intensified a new set of moral attitudes and political commitments that tend to weaken our norms of open debate and toleration of differences in favor of ideological conformity. As we applaud the first development, we also raise our voices against the second. The forces of illiberalism are gaining strength throughout the world and have a powerful ally in Donald Trump, who represents a real threat to democracy. But resistance must not be allowed to harden into its own brand of dogma or coercion, which right-wing demagogues are already exploiting. The democratic inclusion we want can be achieved only if we speak out against the intolerant climate that has set in on all sides. The free exchange of information and ideas, the lifeblood of a liberal society, is daily becoming more constricted. While we have come to expect this on the radical right, censoriousness is also spreading more widely in our culture. An intolerance of opposing views, a vogue for public shaming and ostracism, and the tendency to dissolve complex policy issues in a blinding moral certainty. We uphold the value of robust and even caustic counter-speech from all quarters, but it is now all too common to hear calls for swift and severe retribution in response to perceived transgressions of speech and thought. More troubling still, institutional leaders, in a spirit of panicked damage control, are delivering hasty and disproportionate punishments instead of considered reforms. Editors are fired for running controversial pieces, books are withdrawn for alleged inauthenticity, journalists are barred from writing on certain topics, professors are investigated for quoting works of literature in class, a researcher is fired for circulating a peer-reviewed academic study, and the heads of organizations are ousted for what are sometimes just clumsy mistakes. Whatever the arguments around each particular incident, the result has been to steadily narrow the boundaries of what can be said without the threat of reprisal. We are already paying the price in greater risk aversion among writers, artists, and journalists who fear for their livelihoods if they depart from the consensus, or even lack sufficient zeal in agreement. This stifling atmosphere will ultimately harm the most vital causes of our time. The restriction of debate, whether by a repressive government or an intolerant society, invariably hurts those who lack power and makes everyone less capable of democratic participation. The way to defeat bad ideas is by exposure, argument, and persuasion, not by trying to silence or wish them away. We refuse any false choice between justice and freedom, which cannot exist without each other. As writers, we need a culture that leaves us room for experimentation, risk-taking, and even mistakes. We need to preserve the possibility of good-faith disagreement without dire professional consequences. 
If we won't defend the very thing on which our work depends, we shouldn't expect the public or the state to defend it for us. So that's the letter, and it's signed by all of these people uh, from around the world, it looks like. Um, I don't recognize a lot of these names, I'll be completely honest. I do obviously know, you know, Margaret Atwood. Um, I think Noam Chomsky's on here. And, uh, of course, J.K. Rowling, Salman Rushdie. Uh, but yeah, a lot of these are not particularly recognizable to me. Um... Yeah, so that, that's it. Uh, just to get the elephant out of the room, literally. Uh, my ma main criticism of this is the need to bring in, you know, Donald Trump and U.S. politics. Because this is really a universal problem and a universal principle. And, you know, the world doesn't revolve around Donald Trump, no matter how you feel about him. So uh, I, I really don't think they needed to add that in here. Um, but yeah, I, I agree with the principle behind this. I think it's great that they came out and published this. I don't have any opinions to share on, you know, specific examples they're talking about. But in a general sense, I'm very much, you know, pro free speech. And especially in the arts, that's kind of one of the whole points of having literature and art is to explore ideas and to hear from other people that you do not necessarily agree with. And I think we're all better off when we when we read broadly. Yeah, so that's all I had for this video. I'll link to this letter in the description. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. And uh, I don't know that I'll be doing a lot more videos on these kinds of subjects, but I thought it was uh, fairly relevant to um, to literature, honestly. And to readers as much as to writers.